Hiya. So in this video, we're going to look at how the tail formula kind of helps us uh, using an example. So we're going to break this down into an example. Uh, so what do we have in this example where, uh, let me double check this is okay. Yeah, this is okay size. Uh, so this is example 26.1. Um, and here what we're doing is we're supposing that we roll four fair six-sided die. So we have four uh, six-sided die and they're all fair. There's no weirdness about them. Um, and we let M be the minimum of the four numbers ruled. Uh, so let me write this down uh, since we always like keeping track of our uh, everything, right? So let X1 um, be the number rolled, be the number rolled of first die. Um, X2 be the number rolled of the second die, X3 and X4 similarly. Oops, third. I Okay, let me rewrite this. That looks horrid. And then fourth. And then we're letting M be the minimum of these four. X1, uh, X2, X3, X4. Um, and we're asking what the expected value of um, the value of M is, right? So what is uh, the expected value? So if we want to know, so let's first look at both different ways of doing this, the original way and the uh, tail formula way to kind of figure out why one way is better than another. Um, so if I wanted to calculate uh, the normal value, the normal way, right? So we have here, let me first write both ways of doing this. So the expected value of M, this is either we can take the sum of all X's where P of X, uh, P of M, sorry, is equal to X. Uh, so here X goes from the values are, it's a six sided dice. So the minimum is either going to be one all the way up to six. Um, the alternative way that we saw this is to do the summation of X equals one to six, where we look at this. So um, this is, um, this is the original definition. This is the tail formula. So they're both equal to one another. It's just a different way of looking at things. Um, so for the first one, so here we'll do, this is one and come on, let me write. Okay, I guess it doesn't want me to write on this edge. Uh, this is one and this is two. So let's start off with one. So to do one, I really need to first calculate what these kind of numbers are. Uh, so we're asking really what's the probability that one of the die rolled a J or an X and then everything else was greater than or equal to um, X. So what do we do? So first, um, so first we need to choose a die. So what we want, so P of M equals X. This is um, one die rolls an X and all other die die are greater than or equal to X, right? This is kind of one way to look at this. And we've seen examples of this um, before. Um, I think we did this for a problem session one time. So this should be something um, you've seen before. Um, okay, so first one die rolls an X. So what's the chance of, um, first we have to choose the die. So choosing the die, which one? So the one die part, choose die. This is given by four choose one. Um, rolls an X. This probability is just one sixth, right? So we have one sixth chance of rolling this X. So here we have one sixth. Um, and then we want the probability that all other die roll greater than or equal to this um, X. So what's the chance that each one of these rolls greater than or equal to X? Um, so let's look at a little mini example uh, to find, kind of figure out what we want. So mini example, um, if X is equal to say four, uh, then we know that uh, the other die, other die can be four, five, or six. So we have three options. So three options. 
uh, if we have x is equal to 5, we need two options, right? 5, 6, so two options. Uh, so the formula we really want to use for this um, is going to be given by 6 minus x. So 6 minus 4 gives us 2, 6 minus 5 gives us 1, so we want to add 1, right? Uh, so we have three options and two options. This looks like it works, but we're rolling a die, right? A fair die. So this is the probability. So this is kind of what we end up having. So I guess maybe I should write this. Can I move this? Let me see if I can move this. Let's take this. Is this not... That's not doing anything. Okay. Whoop, womp. Oh, because it's thingied. Okay. Uh, well, never mind. So let's move this over here. So probability uh, getting greater than or equal to x. This we just saw is x minus 6 minus x plus 1 divided by 6. And there's three of them, right? So what this means is we end up having, um, so in case 1, we have e to the uh, e of m is equal to um, uh, uh, x is equal to 1 to 6 x times um, so the probability so here let me write this in two steps uh, and so what we have is x times 4 choose 1 times 1 6 times 6 minus x plus 1 over 6 but we have three of these die, so we have to take this to the third power so this is kind of what we would have to calculate. Um, as you see, it's not a, like in this small case, it's not too bad, but you can very see like it's it's not super fun. Like it's gonna be a little nastier. Um, all right, so let's do uh, part two, or let's look at the second way of doing this and see kind of what happens. So number two, um, and so in this case, we're going to use a tail formula. So what we want to calculate first is this, um, ooh, I am running out of room, p of m greater than or equal to x. But this, we already have, right? We already did this when we were calculating the previous thing. It's here, right? So I already know what this is. So in other words, what we have in this case is e to the e of m is just the sum. So remember, in this case, we just look at x greater than or equal to little x. Um, and in this case, we already know what this is, right? This is just one little thing we have to worry about. 6 minus x plus 1 over 6 to the 4. So this, um, actually, we can just do by hand. It's really, it's really not that hard. So um, we have 6 minus 6 plus 1 over 6 to the 4. Um, plus, um, and then notice here, 6 minus 6 is 0, so we get 1 sixth. So really, we just have 1 sixth, um, 1 sixth, and then we get 6 minus 5 um, plus 1 over 6. So 6 minus 5 is 1, plus 1 is 2, so really, again, we have just 2 here. So this is actually turning out to be easier than we thought, right? So I'm going to assume this is 3 over 6 over 4, plus 4 over 6 over 4. Right, so this is much, much easier. Look how nicely, yeah, look how much nicer this breaks out, right? And so if you were to add all of these up, you would get around 1.755. Um, so like this way of doing things was much, much, much easier to look at and to just calculate, right? Like this is, you just plug in, yeah. So you can kind of see sometimes this tail formula is a nicer way of doing things. Uh, so if you see something where it's like nicer to calculate um, one thing, like if you, like as you're doing, so say you're doing it in part one, right? You're doing it the normal way and you realize, oh, I need to calculate greater than or equal to X. Well, if I need to calculate that, then why can't I just do this for all of them, right? Um, and so that's basically what you, um, what you end up doing. Um, so, yeah. Um, We'll stop here for now. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about Markov's inequality. So I will see you then.